Hi, I'm Dr. Jackson Crawford. I teach in the Department of Scandinavian at the University of California, Berkeley, and I've also recently translated the Poetic Edda into a new contemporary English form. Today I'm continuing with my Patreon-supported series of videos about Norse language and myth. This video is part of a small cluster of videos that I'm making about words in Old Norse that are easily confused. This video focuses on the word at, which has very many meanings, wears a lot of hats. At uh, is clearly related to the English word at, and it can sometimes be translated by at. So, for instance, in this sentence, ther como at nevendri stundu. They came at the named time. So, at being uh, an expression of time, just like we can say in English, uh, at daybreak, say, at the name time. Actually, this is a fairly uncommon use of at. You mostly will not see it uh, directly translating English at. So be watchful for that. The rest of these meanings are actually much more common. It can also have a sense that's a little bit prepositional like at, but is sort of vague and just adds information that you probably already know. I call this with respect to or incapacity of. Uh, let's look at the kind of examples that I, or some examples of this kind of thing. So mother er sigi het at napni. That man who sigi is named in respect to his name. So we already know that his name is, is sigi, but at just adds the sort of unnecessary extra information. This is his name in the capacity of his name. And this is used very frequently uh, in descriptions of people, like saying that he is tall with respect to height, or, um, or, 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 or beautiful with respect to looks, that kind of thing. Similarly, han var alrosken at aldri. He was mature with respect to age. So he's over, we, we've already established that he's a, a mature person, a person who's full grown, but then we have this sort of unnecessary in the capacity of phrase with at. So both when it's functioning as a preposition that means at, like in English, and when it's in these sort of redundant in the capacity or with respect phrases, at takes a dative object. So notice that uh, stundu here and aldri here and atni here are all in the dative. All right, that's at as a preposition, but at also functions in non-prepositional ways. At translates the to in an English phrase like to be or not to be. So when you have an infinitive in Old Norse, it is often used together with at, just like an infinitive verb in English is often used with to. So in a sentence like han ætlaði at sökja heim Odin, he intended to visit at home Odin. He intended to visit Odin at home. This at translates English to he intended to visit. And that's a one-for-one -one translation um, that is usually fairly easy to make. Whenever you see an at in front of an infinitive verb, and infinitive verbs almost always end in a in Old Norse, they're the form that you find the verb in in the dictionary, uh, then you know this is almost certainly this two sense. Just like you know that if you see at before a uh, dative noun, it's probably this at sense or this with respect to sense. But now, probably the commonest use of at actually translates English that or that in the phrase so that. At is used to mean that in the way that we use it in English when we say I believe that or I think that or I see that. So I believe that you're lying to me or I think that you're honest. The that in those phrases would be translated by at in Old Norse. Let's take a look at a few examples. Hig ek at men se i skogenum. Think I, I think that men are in the forest. So I think that uh, that that in English has as its equivalent the at in Old Norse here. Notice that since I'm saying I think, 
uh, something is potentially happening and not stating a directly known fact, the verb here is in the subjunctive. Similarly, Jorun seger at heni thoti grunsamlig forthera. So Jorun says that to her seemed suspicious their journey. So Jorun said that their journey seemed suspicious to her. Notice that in English we can actually uh, get rid of the word that in sentences like this. We can say, I think men are in the forest. We don't have to say, I think that men are in the forest. But in Old Norse it is obligatory. All right, and then in a related sense, at can appear with swo, the word so, it means so that. So, han fer ser mikit lid, so at han egnadisk land och fe. He gets himself a great army so that he comes into possession of land and property. This is a, a, a similar sense because we're translating it in English by that. Uh, and again, the word that may not be necessary in English. We can say he gets himself a big army so he comes into possession of land and property. But in Old Norse, we do have to use the equivalent of that. We have to use at. In modern Icelandic, at has developed into av. So if you've studied uh, modern Icelandic, you may be familiar with it under that form, uh, a el rather than a t. But uh, its grammar is largely the same. Well, from the University of California, Berkeley, all the best to you.